The White House ordering thousands of troops to withdraw from Afghanistan and Iraq by January 15th. That decision comes as no surprise after Trump's shakeup of the Pentagon leadership last week. But is it the right move for America? We'll discuss it. Bobby Everly joining us now, the president and CEO of GOPUSA.com and host of the 13-Minute News Hour. Hal Lambert is joining us, former Ted Cruz National Finance Chair and founder and CEO of Point Bridge Capital. Uh, good to see both of you here. Hal, I'll start with you on this one. We'll talk about Afghanistan first. Peace talks with the government and the Taliban have stalled. Afghanistan is uh, reportedly in a fragile state. Your thoughts on this, is it wise for us to withdraw troops at this time? Hal Lambert. Well, look, this is a replay of what we've seen for 19 years. We've been there for 19 years. Uh, President Trump ran four years ago on pulling troops completely out of Afghanistan and Iraq. He's now had four years to get that done. We're at 4,000 troops. He's talking about moving it to 2,500. Look, I know Mitch McConnell and, and Marco Rubio are against this, but at what point do you say, look, we, the American people don't want us there? Uh, and at what point do you say, look, we can't be the babysitters for another decade? We, we have to make a decision on whether or not the Afghan government can handle itself or not. And if the Taliban are the problem, then are we supposed to just sit back and continue to let this go on and stay there and stay there and stay there? So, look, it's a very difficult uh, strategic thing that has to happen. And I think none of us on this program obviously know the inside of what's going on from a, from a national security standpoint. But what we do know is what's going on for 19 years. And it's been way too long. And there's a time at which point you have to say, look, we've got to move on. We've got to pull out. Yeah, and that was actually the point I was going to make. I mean, you know, we're, we're not we don't know enough to make a decision like that. But just regardless of stepping back for all of America watching this, all intensive purposes, as you stated, we've been there almost 20 years, Bobby. Um, there's yeah. a lot of folks who want to see their troops come home. But then you have the pushback of those saying, hey, look, Taliban, ISIS, this all may pop back up if we're not there. But if you say that, that means we'll never leave. Right, exactly. You have to f figure out in your mind and in your policy, what do you want America's role to be in the Middle East? It's crucial, no doubt about it. We want stability. And we saw what happened when Barack Obama just made a, you know, a proclamation. We're going to pull out of Iraq when things weren't stable, weren't ready, and ISIS went out of control. We had to go back and basically do things again to wipe out ISIS another time. And we saw what happened. But this is different. This is, again, over a 19, 20 year period. We've been drawing things down and it eventually has to come to the fact where the Afghan government has to tell the Taliban, look, we got to get things in order because that's the reason we're there. We're there because to keep the Taliban down, which is something the Afghan government should be doing. And how long can we keep doing this? We're going to withdraw another 2000 troops. OK, we still have a force there to monitor or educate or train the Afghan government, but eventually they have to do it themselves, and this is the time to do it. Yeah, a lot of the concern is being able to overthrow Afghan government very easily to do so, if that is uh, indeed the case. I want to ask you about this one. Uh, the new acting defense secretary, Christopher Miller, sent a letter to troops in an excerpt of what he said. Here's this. As we prepare for the future, we remain committed to finishing the war that al-Qaeda brought to our shores in 2001. <clears throat> this war isn't over. We are on the verge of defeating al-Qaeda and its associates, but we must avoid our past strategic error of failing to see the fight through to the finish, end quote of ad excerpt there. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring it back to you, Hal Lambert. Uh, while we may see the withdrawal of the troops, as we heard from Christopher Miller, he's saying the war really isn't over. Yeah, that's the same uh, message that we have inside a, a lot of the Pentagon. And I think uh, that's why President Trump was, was very upset with him. So Look, he, the, the commander in chief is President Trump. He's going to be the one making the decision in consultation with others. But, you know, again, we hear the same story of, you know, we can't withdraw too quickly. We can't withdraw too quickly. Wait a minute. It's been 19 years. We're not withdrawing too quickly. And I think at some point, you know, I'm, I'm glad President Trump is moving forward and putting this back in the spotlight uh, before, you know, uh, we, get, we get into January. So I think it's important to do. Uh, Bobby Eberle, talk to me a little bit about Syria, if we can turn now to Syria. A top U.S. official admitting, admitting uh, lying to Trump on American troop levels in Syria. Uh, what's your response to that? What do you see in Syria and what's happening there and, and the leadership here at home? Well, what I see is a lot of the deep state in action. I mean, Hal mentioned it when we're talking about the Pentagon and we're talking about in what's going on in Afghanistan. Syria is the same thing. They want to keep Americans there 
but partially also it deals with what's going on with our own government, always opposing President Trump and his actions. He has been uniform in his policies from the get-go to stop endless wars. He's the first one in over a generation not to start a new war, to pull us back, to withdraw at a level that maintains the stability of the Middle East. We definitely want stability in the Middle East. We don't want Russia coming in, China coming in, Iraq doing some, Iran doing some strange things. They've already gone to war with <laughs> Iraq multiple times. So we need the stability there, but we have to follow President Trump as commander in chief and follow that policy and not have our own Pentagon working against him. All right, I got to leave it there. I am out of time, but I appreciate both of you being on the show. That's Bobby Eberly and Hal Lambert. Hal, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.